The RTX 3060 got hacked already, CSGO was removed from Steam, and the Nintendo Switch might stop production later this year. Let's get into the tech news, my friends. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna get into the hottest news you can find on the internet, part of hot news right now, and we're gonna get it all started with the top story of this right here. Damn it, Chinese mod is basically the post right here showing you that this is an RTX 3060 running at the hash rate of 45 mega hash. And this is getting reported across the internet that they got past the mining filter. That was a really loud clap. My ear is ringing right now. And the mining filter that NVIDIA put on so that you couldn't mine at full rates, well, that's gone and has apparently been hacked according to this one Twitter post. However, if you just listen to the people in the comments and read a little bit more, it does appear like they are not mining Ethereum right here, which specifically is what that mining limitation is for that NVIDIA put on it. It's specifically for Ethereum and not for other cryptocurrencies, at least as far as what NVIDIA has said. So that basically makes the gate really meaningless because it's a gate that's open on both sides. You, can, you can't mine Ethereum, but hey, go ahead and mine other things, allegedly according to what's happening right here. So it does look like they were mining something besides Ethereum. It's not 100% confirmed, but I mean, the screenshot was, this is the screenshot. You, you really trusting that it was hacked based on this? That's device manager and a command prompt, guys. Don't necessarily trust it. And based on what NVIDIA is saying, it's probably not going to get hacked anytime soon, but we'll let you know if it does. RTX 3060 is still not working for Ethereum, but your NAS might be working for hackers on crypto mining. There is a new exploit that's been revealed in QNAP NAS devices, which people are using to mine cryptocurrency. This is just, ah, uh, if you hack enough storage devices, how, like, I guess you could, wow, this is something, just update, okay? Cause QNAP's working on, they're trying to make it so that you can't do that. They were hiding their CPU usage, making it so that they were mining it. Obviously CPU mining is not good in the first place, but Wow, okay, that's the scale that we're at right now. People can't get GPU, so they're resorting to their NAS. I see you, my Synology. You better start giving me some crypto coin, you hear? Yes, Papa. And do you hear MSI telling you that you should mine or at least promoting it in their official documentation with one of their gaming laptops, showing how their GE76 Raider performs in Bitcoin mining. So you can see it's roughly the same performance as a 3070 desktop card. That's right, get in on that laptop mining, courtesy of MSI, they want you to know that's what you should be using their laptops for, which brings us perfectly to the Bitcoin update. We've got $56,500, up 4%, 1.06 trillion market cap. That's doing pretty well. And you know what did pretty well yesterday? The GameStop update. Look at that. It went up to a peak of nearly $350 before cratering 40% to $198 and then finished the day at 265. It was a wild day for anybody who's invested in GameStop. Absolutely. I mean, diamond hands to survive that free fall of 40%. And potentially just maybe my guessing, not a financial advisor, not even somebody who's really all that invested in stock trading. It could have been that people had limit orders set to 350 and those got triggered, which precipitated the entire fall or it was just, you know, hedge funds. That's the end of the GameStop Bitcoin update. And Steam had to update their servers because they had accidentally removed Counter-Strike Global Offensive over the weekend. Apparently there was a bug that removed a whole bunch of titles, CSGO being one of the most popular that was removed, but don't worry, it's back now in case you wanna play that free to play game. And in case you want free performance, Look elsewhere. Intel leaked benchmarks from their slides that we're expecting to see. We've already seen complete reviews published on these chips because they're available at retail, at certain retailers, especially over in Europe. So this isn't necessarily surprising. It does show off some cherry picking by Apple to show how the i9-11900K is better than the previous generation and then how it beats the 5900X. Obviously, these are game titles that Intel is specifically choosing, so don't 100% trust it. And also reviews that are coming out right now don't have the complete BIOS updates that are supposed to be out. So there might be some performance upgrades that should come out to the chips before they're released to actual retail, like when Intel wants them to release, but it may not. And they might just be 200 watt behemoths that are barely better than the 10th gen. We'll have to wait and see, but you don't have to wait to see people's faces in VR anymore because HTC has announced that its face tracker is gonna be going on sale for $130. The Vive facial tracker can detect your mouth movements and then put 
put it into your avatar that's playing at 1.7 speed so that looks weird but that's this is actually something that i think is necessary for like these vr avatars that are popping up if you can actually replicate the facial animations and i mean sort of the hand gestures i think this this brings us a lot closer to usable vr for like social interactions and i i appreciate that a bit more <laughs> We'll see how far this gets adopted and how many systems actually implement it. Probably not many, especially since not a lot of people are working with the Vive or the Vive Pro. So it might be just dead in the water, but I do like to see this innovation coming out. Oh, and you like to see the innovation of you not allowed to tamper with your games, Denuvo, being implemented on the PS5, or at least Denuvo announcing that it is available for PS5 developers in case they want to put this software that you don't need really on a PlayStation because nobody's really hacking the PlayStation. The PS4, once Sony decided to lock it down, it's kind of hard to get around. Anyways, they're making it so that you, you can use it. But Denuvo slows things down, all right? It's gonna get hacked anyways. Are you real? I don't know. Maybe you're getting more in day one sales by having this, but probably not on PlayStation. You're just ruining the experience at the very best. But while PlayStation 5 might be getting a useless Denuvo update, Microsoft is actually up updating some stuff in their store that makes it slightly more usable. They're gonna have it so that if you look at a game in the Microsoft store, it'll allow you to know what languages the game is actually playable in, which is dope. Give me more information about games. Yes, please. You want more information about the Nintendo Switch? Well, according to rumors out there, you might wanna just take this with the giant dose of onion salt. The Switch SOC might stop being produced later this year. The Tegra X1 Mariko chip might go end of life, especially since Nvidia has been making these forever. These were, I mean, they're, they're on Maxwell. It's a super, super old chip where it's not on a new architecture and especially with the rumors of the Switch Pro slated to be launched later this year and the upgrades that are supposed to be coming to that, it likely does bear some weight that the Tegra X1 will stop being in production and there would should be a new either Turing or Ampere SOC that's gonna be produced and brought into the Switch. And I want you to switch on over to watching another video from us. You can check out yesterday's episode of Hot News right there. You can check out this playlist down here in case you missed any episodes. You can catch up on the whole week's worth of hot news, okay? You don't wanna be watching cold news, ever. I wouldn't want that for you. So watch the hot news and I'll see you in the second episode later today, friends. Cheers. <laughs>